have the time of confession of faith. Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. Please greet the person next to you. May you live the life of spiritual authority. Our senior pastor is currently coming back from the RCA. May you please pray for his ministry with one heart, whole heart, and continuation. The title for today is Life with Spiritual Authority. This Sunday, I am meeting you by screen. You're listening to me after the RCA, the Remnant Conference in America being held in Chicago in the United States. I'm arriving in Korea this afternoon, so I recorded a video for today's sermon. I'm trying my best to preach the word on the pulpit every Sunday, and if possible, to not miss a single pulpit. And it is so that you'd be able to do the walk of faith with the answers, not losing hold of the spiritual stream of the word. The pulpit message is the spiritual milestone, and it has the exact time schedule of answers depending on the situations you are in. So after COVID, we have various conferences. So this year, about one more time, I will be meeting you on video as there is the conference in Panama. So depending on the situations you are in, the exact time schedule is within the pulpit. I'm a huge fan of baseball, and that I am so happy to see Ha Sang Kim, the elder of Sun Jung Kim, doing a wonderful job in the major leagues in San Diego. He won the first Golden Glove as an Asian, being the top shortstop player who performed the best defense. We had lunch together last week, and he had donated for the Uni World. And he showed an amazing defense skill as an infielder. If he works with his bat a little more, he will definitely be the summit in the major leagues. May we all please pray for him. So hearing his testimony while having lunch, it's that he had three prayer topics, and he said that it was all answered exactly. Of course, he said, because he was young, being a pro athlete, he prayed for a lot of money. But he received a lot of training in church and had gone to many mission trips. But even now, he's holding on to the word and listening to the word. And Pastor Paul is doing a room movement together. So they have this background of the gospel together. Why is it that other athletes don't try? They do. Especially for the Asians, it's difficult to catch up to, let's say, the athletes from South America. But 
we believe that it is an answer from God. You might question why is he talking about baseball all of a sudden? There is a term, batting eye, in baseball. It is an eye to discern the ball that the pitcher throws, and deciding whether to hit it or not in a very fast manner. In Korea, the normal rate is 140 kilometers, but in the United States, it's 150, 160 kilometers. So he saw it for the first time. He just would blink, and the ball would be passed. If he saw the ball, he would be too late in batting. So he would look at the pitcher, and he said that he would decide on the strike zone. And he said it's like a tunnel. And if it comes, it's a strike, and if it is not, then it's a ball. So he was speaking of something that he never even told his parents. So he really has a very good batting eye. I said, why is Park byung ho lagging back? And he said, because he's getting old, the reflexes are getting slow, and he doesn't have a good batting eye right now. But he says, you have to be born with it. So if the player has a great batting eye, he has no choice but to be a good player. So it's the same thing in your walk of faith. The spiritual batting eye. Should I be able to listen to this word or not? Should I be able to imprint this word or not? You have to have this discernment, knowing what is important and what is not important. Depending on that, is it helpful to your spiritual life or not? In your walk of faith, what is the way to have a good batting eye? It is focusing on the message that is preached on every Sunday. There will be times when the message tells you things that are against your thoughts and wills. You might not understand. This is the exact time when you must have the spiritual batting eye. When you completely follow the Word of God rather than your thoughts and wills, you will spiritually grow and will start to live a life of spiritually influencing others. <clears throat> that is why I am paying attention to stay inside the spiritual stream of the pulpit message. Last week was Thanksgiving Sunday, so we focused on the passage related to that. This Sunday, we are back to the book of Mark. When you see today's scripture, it is talking about Jesus, who started his ministry only with his amazing spiritual authority and without the worldly power. Authority is the power and the right to give others and to make decisions. It's to give orders and to make decisions. This is not making people obey forcefully, but rather making people follow by moving their hearts. Jesus began his public ministry under the authority of Jesus. The Israelites experienced astonishing enlightenment and change that they have never experienced before. Every word that Jesus spoke 
an action that he did was of a different level from the Jewish leaders at that time. The word caused a great wave of change to the people because it has authority and power. I hope that all believers of Yon Church will receive the answers from the question of what the spiritual authority that Jesus showed through today's message is. Therefore, I bless you in the name of the Lord to become the absolute disciples of Christ who lives a life with spiritual authority and creating vital dynamics. Number one, the authority of Jesus that saves lives. Verses 1, 21 to 22 reads, We can see that Jesus taught the word to his disciples in the synagogue at Capernaum. There was a Jewish synagogue, and Jesus went into the synagogue on the Sabbath. However, the Jews gathered there said that they were astonished at the moment they heard of the teachings of Jesus. That's what they expressed. Until now, they had heard and learned a lot from the Jewish leaders, especially the scribes who wrote and taught the Bible. But his words were very different. We cannot exactly know what Jesus said because there is no record in the text. However, what is important is that we can see that there is a great change in the people who heard the words of Jesus. There was change. In the text, the expression that people were surprised by the words of Jesus is not just saying something like, it's a bit different. It's not that level. In the original text, it means that the minds were dazed due to the great shock. It had such a strong impact. The teaching of Jesus was fundamentally different from the formalized and religious content of the scribes who previously preached in the synagogues. They could not help but to be shocked by the authority of the vital word, which was different from the formal teachings of the law. So what was that content? So, it is what Jesus proclaimed when he came to this earth. It was the gospel of God. Therefore, the word spoken in the synagogue must have been the gospel of God. He would have pointed out the fundamental problem of life apart from God through the Old Testament. God quenched their spiritual thirst by telling the way of salvation to escape from the fact that due to the sin of the first man, Adam, which occurred in Genesis chapter 3, all mankind had no choice but to live in sin and be cursed as slaves to Satan, and they go down the path of eternal destruction. Hearing Jesus speak about the spiritual truth must have been a shock to them, because all they have been taught was all about the do's and don'ts. As a team of three movement is taking place, many newcomers have come, but there are two kinds of newcomers. Some are non-believers who have come to church for the first time in their lives, and some were already believers of different churches and moved to Yowon Church. I reviewed the weekly newcomers report that contains the various reactions of the newcomers. Some say that they do not have a clue on what this is all about. 
because it is their first time in church. But most newcomers say that they feel something different about our church. They say that they felt something new here. Especially those who move from other churches have said that hearing the gospel message from the pulpit, they were shocked and deeply moved. I know that our conductor, Elder No, he had evangelized to about ten people, and eight people have been settled to the church. And after the worship, what they said after their third service. And they said that today's sermon was like Gucci, and it was expressing the service, saying it was a luxurious service. So they were saying it's different, and that they were shocked by the word. So I always end up giving thanks to God, seeing their souls reviving. The gospel that I preach here is not anything else. It's that Jesus is the Christ, the answer to all our problems. Therefore, there cannot be a change in the field where the life of Jesus Christ is not preached. And those who believe in this and those who don't are completely different. Those who believe in this, they will be able to say amen to it naturally. But for those who don't believe, even if we say that Jesus is the Christ the answer to all their problems, if they don't believe in it, they just let it pass by. But for those who believe, their posture, or words, they're all different. In John fourteen six, Jesus said clearly, "I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me." This is what Jesus had said. That is why Apostle Paul says in Philippians two eight sixteen that he is putting his all in and to go all in for the sake of the gospel, so that he may be proud in the day of Christ. This is the only way our life or labor to not be in vain. There is a common characteristic for scientists like Newton, Einstein, Edison, and businessmen like Warren Buffett or CEOs like Bill Gates, who achieved a remarkable success. What is the similarity? It is immersive thinking. It is thinking about an issue in a highly concentrated state. One of the important practical methods of Jewish gifted education is to encourage immersive thinking. For those who do not have immersive thinking, whatever field it may be, it's difficult for them to succeed. Other people will say that they are crazy about it. If that person is crazy about it, then that person is very successful. No matter what role that person has, doing what, even when saving lives, it is crucial to come to the fact to have immersive thinking. When you immerse yourself in something you find fun in, the fruit follows. Let's say that you found a tiger, and how you express after seeing that is different. The person who relays those words, expressing how they were in that situation. If you have that immersive thinking, it's fun. The fruits follow naturally.
Personally, I did immersive thinking for evangelization, and I'm speaking to you as a witness. I have tasted evangelism. So I went around the country doing conferences regarding evangelization. I went all in and had immersive thinking. So no matter what ministry I went into, I was successful. In the region, starting from five people, I made it to go to 60 people, 150 people was when I started the elementary school ministry. And then in six months, I doubled that. And then I was the young adult president with 30, 40 people. I made it to go to 1,080 people. You may not be surprised, but at that time, there was an up more. Right now, our young adults have worship in the main sanctuary. I did that in Seungno Church in Busan. So when I was in charge of the men's ministry, I was the president and made that ministry grow. And for when I was in the financial ministry, before it was when they would upscale it to five, ten percent, I would multiply that into many figures. I was an assistant pastor for one year. When I was in second year of seminary school, I was an elder who was in seminary, but there was a vacant space in the high school department. So I prayed for immersive thinking and I fasted for three days as the base. And then God gave me an idea on what to do. A hundred and 50, and then it was 150, and then it, in the end, it was 950 high school members for one year, immersive thinking. That concentration, all in. So may you have that immersive thinking. This is what geniuses do. Those people who have the immersive thinking are the geniuses. If you don't fully do it, and if you do it half-heartedly, how can God bless you? So when I was in PhD of seminary school, I was asked to do a conference. I had 800 people who were in the same grade as me. And I said, did you make the church have revival? Did you go out and evangelize? And they said, if you did not do that, go back. Pray. How much did you pray? And then we were challenging for prayer and evangelization. And everybody went up to the mountain that night and we prayed all night long saying that we'll do it too. I bless all you unbelievers in the name of the Lord to realize that Jesus' authority is what saves lives and enter into the life of evangelists who saves lives. It's different from what is of the world. May you make the paradigm shift and have the spiritual immersive thinking. May you be able to have the answer. Number two, the spiritual authority that binds the forces of darkness. Verses 23 to 24. 
나사렛 예수여 우리가 당신과 무슨 상관이 있나이까 우리를 멸하러 왔나이까 하는 당신이 누구인 줄 아노니 하나님의 거룩한 자니이다 While Jesus was teaching in Capernaum in the synagogue, one incident occurred. While Jesus was preaching, a man possessed by an unclean spirit cried out loudly, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. The demon really recognized is itself just like a demon. In 1 John 3a, Jesus explains one of the reasons for his coming to this earth. Whoever makes a practice of sinning is of the devil, for the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. According to the passage, Jesus came to this earth as the king of kings to destroy the works of the devil. The demons, the, de the devil's servants, knew this fact very well because they were spiritual beings. Jesus is expressed as the Holy One of God. This is an expression meaning the Messiah. We know that Jesus will come as Christ and fulfill the role as our prophet who is the way to meet God, our priest who solved all sin problems, and the king who defeated the powers of darkness. The demon knew this and was talking about something that Peter, Jesus' great disciple, did not yet know and what the other disciples did not notice at all. the Holy One of God. The purpose of Jesus' is coming. However, what's interesting is that Jesus didn't ask the demon how he knew that fact. He didn't engage with the demon's words at all. Instead, he immediately rebuked it and commanded it to come out of the man. The authority of Jesus' words caused the demon to have no choice but to leave the man instantly without putting up a resistance. This is the method by which the power of darkness is broken. In today's passage, it refers to the demon as an unclean spirit. Demons are impure entities, unable to coexist with the Holy Spirit of God dwelling within us. They are expressed especially deceptive and destructive forces aiming to deceive and bring about ruins. John 10.10 10 clearly states a thief only comes to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Demons and evil spirits ultimately aim to deceive, kill, and bring about destruction in their lives. Hence, consulting a fortune teller possessed by evil spirits leads to one down a path of destruction, and these beings are intent on leading forward the ruins. They asked, can I go on this business trip or can I get married? They will fail together. An assistant pastor was serving in a rural church, and there was a demon-possessed person in the village. Since it was his first time encountering the situation, he didn't know what to do. So he took the demon-possessed person and sat around with a few believers, singing hymns and praying. However, the ghost did not go out. So they continued to take turns reading the Bible, and when the person who was normally lukewarm in this walk of faith read the Bible, the quiet demon-possessed person suddenly shouted at this person, saying, you don't believe it.
this person was so shocked that he fell on the spot and repented because he did not believe. There are many people who don't believe. Must the devil, the ghost, say to you that you don't believe? There are many people who sh should be able to hear that. They're lukewarm, not knowing whether that person has a church duty or not, whether he goes to church or not. May you believe. Mark 16, 17 makes it clear that Jesus, who casts out demons with words, has given us the authority as well. The same authority. And these signs will accompany those who believe in my name. They will cast out demons. Amen. We can clearly see that he has given us the authority to drive out demons in the name of Jesus Christ. I was a born Christian, but I did not know this. I never heard of it. I did not know I had this authority. However, establishing the church, there are people who are demon-possessed. So as an assistant pastor, I had to do it. Even if they would not go, I should have at least made an effort to do it. So as I was reading the Gospels, he said, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, may you go out. I would stay with my lips, but I had doubt, questioning, would they go out? Questioning my authority, but it fled. Seeing that, I was shocked. The name of Jesus Christ has such power. Praying in the name of Jesus Christ, that demon goes out. How can I heal a fatal disease? Am I a doctor? No. But I went to the hospital two times a week praying for that person, and that person was healed. Oh, it's so amazing. I did not know that there was such gifts. But in the Bible, it said, for those who aren't sick, the hands will go upon that person. And there was one pastor who questioned, if you cannot make a demon flee, how can you call yourself a pastor? If you want to test that, then you can follow the shaman team. There are so many people who are oppressed around us, not being able to live their lives because they are so broken down, having lost of their identity, being within addictions, may be able to free them with the name of Jesus Christ. If you pray in the name of Jesus Christ, there will be great works to take place. Therefore, I bless all you believers in the name of the Lord to live a life with spiritual authority that liberates all those who are oppressed by sin, curses, and power of Satan in the name of Jesus Christ. This is the conclusion. There is a saying, lost but beautiful. It is an expression often used in sports and has the meaning of, I lost, but I fought well. This is an expression used when a team with weaker skills ultimately lost, but showed sportsmanship and amazing fighting spirit in the game, making it a great game. However, although such losses are meaningful in sports games, they should never occur in spiritual battles. The loss, but beautiful, is totally meaningless in the spiritual battle against the forces of darkness. This is because you must definitely win the spiritual battle. You must achieve complete victory in the fight against the forces of darkness. This is because the spiritual authority to win has been given through Jesus Christ. This has been given to you. The important thing is for you to not be deceived. 
In First John chapter five, verses four to five, Apostle John declares, "For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world: our faith." It is those who believe that Jesus is the Son of God. So it is winning the battle that it is already won. So it is victory before fight. Because Christ has won over everything, we have won over the world. That's why we don't have to lose. It's a already won battle. So may we confess together. I am the victor who overcomes the world. Amen. You are the victors. You must be bold. As you believe in Jesus, so I'm not saying that you should be prideful, but be the ones who have this confidence. I bless all members of the Ewan Church in the name of the Lord to become the absolute disciples of Christ, who uses the spiritual authority shown by Jesus to overcome the force of darkness in the field of life and build solid partisan of light. Let us pray together, dear Father God. We are the people who have the spiritual authority. May we be able to follow after Jesus Christ to save people and force away the force of darkness and be the victors of the world with this authority. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray. Amen.